Joining us now on the line from London, UK, Philippe Legrain. He is an economist, journalist, and author of Immigrants, Your Country Needs Them. Philippe, it's nice to have you there on the line from London for us. I want to start by asking you about a part of the international economy that I suspect our viewers don't know that much about. It's hugely important, but uh, a lot of it happens very quietly. Remittances, what are they? Well, remittances, well, it's good. first of all, it's good to, to be here with you. Um, remittances are, is uh, the name given to the money that uh, migrants uh, send uh, home. And uh, last year, it came to 300 billion US dollars worldwide. That's a huge figure, especially when you think that uh, only $100 billion uh, is what governments give uh, in aid. So it's three times bigger. And it's also bigger than foreign investment, uh, the, uh, number, the uh, money uh, invested by companies in factories and offices in developing countries. So it's an absolutely crucial and, and uh, you know, often overlooked uh, part of uh, uh, assistance to developing countries. In fact, we have a chart here that we're going to share with our viewers right now, which shows that from 1998 to 2008, over that decade, remittances started uh, at $73 billion. And as you correctly point out, 2008, the last year for which figures are available, up north of $300 billion worldwide. To what do you attribute so much growth? Well, part of a, partly it's because of a rise in migration. Uh, partly also it's because um, uh, that we've got more interest in it and therefore we're measuring it better. And you see a lot of the steep growth is simply because previously figures um, uh, that, w that weren't counted now are. But even the 300 billion is actually uh, an underestimate because um, a lot of mon money is sent uh, unofficially, uh, particularly uh, in countries um, uh, you know, uh, where the banking system is corrupt or particularly for illegal migrants uh, or uh, in other cases, people who just uh, uh, simply find it cheaper to send home money with, uh, uh, you know, in suitcases or with or with relatives and so on. So I, I would say that the uh, the true figure of remittances uh, is uh, is much much bigger even than 300 billion. Well, let me follow up on something you've just touched on there because I, I think we need to know more about how this actually happens. I understand that there can be official bank transfers and everybody understands that it's a way to follow the money as it were. But do people really just? put money in a suitcase and send it back home? That happens? Well, there are very reliable uh, and rapid uh, systems of money transfer that are based on trust, um, uh, which you know, re work remarkably well. Certainly, networks like that exist uh, in the Arab world. They exist uh, uh, across Asia. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, you know, clearly, um, uh, they, they are trusted. Um, uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're very important. You have to realize, of course, that bank transfers are often, A, very expensive, uh, B, that they take, uh, can take, you know, several days, uh, even, even longer in many cases, and thirdly, that many of the people to whom uh, money is being sent uh, don't have a bank account, and therefore sending through a bank transfer uh, is not particularly helpful. And that's why most money goes to um, uh, agencies such as Western Union, uh, but a large, a large proportion also goes through um, uh, informal channels. Can you give us the typical profile of a country which would be on the receiving end of remittances, mostly, I guess, from places like Canada, the United States, Western Europe, and so on? Um, well, uh, obviously, uh, well, first of all, remittances are sent to all countries, including uh, to Canada by uh, Canadians working overseas. The focus, obviously, is on developing countries, and the poorer countries are, uh, the more uh, that uh, people who go abroad uh, tend to send uh, money back. You can see in the case of the Philippines, for example, uh, that it accounts for north of 14% of GDP. Uh, in some small uh, Caribbean islands, it's up to a third of the economy. And so it, it makes an absolutely uh, vital difference, um, not only to uh, the livelihoods uh, of the people to whom money is sent, uh, but also uh, to the economy overall uh, as that money is spent. Uh, and it, it's estimated that one in 10 people worldwide uh, receive remittances. So it's a, uh, it's a, it's a really widespread phenomenon. Hmm. Are there incentives that governments in developing countries put in place in order to encourage people to send remittances to their citizens? Oh, well, the Philippines is, is incredibly uh, active uh, in providing all sorts of uh, uh, you know, uh, assistance uh, and uh, uh, making, pos making it possible to send home uh, money cheaply because the Philippines government has an explicit policy of encouraging its workers to go overseas uh, um, uh, to, to, to work. Uh, in other cases, obviously, um, uh, the, the burden needs to fall actually on, on, on rich countries, you know, uh, United States, Canada, uh, Europe. 
uh, to find uh, ways to make it cheaper and safer uh, to send money home. Uh, because particularly, for example, um, in certain African countries where the banking system uh, is corrupt, where there might be, say, uh, a, a black uh, exchange rate, so that if you send it through official channels, you end up losing uh, most of it um, uh, in, 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 in currency conversion costs, to find a cheap way uh, uh, to send money back home to uh, the people who need it most. The great fear today, of course, is that with the recession taking hold as it has, remittances uh, will be down significantly and the people who depend on them will be severely hurt by that. Do you have any uh, good speculation on what you think uh, is happening to remittances now that the economy has turned so sour? Well, obviously it's too early to be sure, um, but there are initial indications. Uh, the Inter-American Development Bank has recently produced figures um, for Latin America, and they show, for example, that uh, remittances to Mexico have fallen uh, by 12% uh, in January of this year compared to January of last year, that those to Brazil have fallen by 14%, and that those to Ecuador um, have fallen by a catastrophic uh, 22%. Uh, and so these are you know, really substantial falls. Um, and uh, that's obviously something which is particularly worrying, uh, given that um, rich countries are also uh, cutting their overseas aid budgets. And so this could be a double blow um, to uh, developing countries. We're going to put up another chart now. Once again, this is a World Bank uh, uh, figures that we're going to share with our viewers here. These are the top five countries in the world in terms of their share of GDP. These are 2007 numbers. 45% of Tajikistan's GDP comes from remittances. 38% for Moldova, 35% for Tonga, Lesotho tracks in at 29%, and then Honduras at 25%. You know, what will these countries do if the remittances go down as much as people fear they will. These are not rich countries to begin with, obviously. Sure. Well, it's just yet another way in which this global financial and now economic crisis um, is being transmitted um, across the, the world economy. And, and uh, you know, partly it's finance, partly it's trade, and now uh, also um, uh, remittances. I mean, uh, clearly for, for countries and community, I mean, c countries, communities, and people who are dependent uh, on remittances, um, uh, if, if uh, uh, the main breadwinner who happens to be working in Canada or the U.S. Um, loses their job, um, is no longer able to send to send money home, and there are few job opportunities at home, uh, it can have uh, catastrophic consequences. At the same time, I think you, um, we, we shouldn't be too negative about remittances. I mean, the, f the thing is, they are a much more stable uh, flow of money uh, than, say, you know, uh, volatile international capital. You know, unlike a bank uh, which might cut off credit um, uh, to a country uh, very quickly, um, a, a migrant working overseas is going to do uh, his or her damnedest uh, to keep the money going uh, to, to support um, their relatives um, uh, back home. And also, paradoxically, countries um, which are suffering um, uh, from a, a, an economic crisis, from a, a collapsing uh, currency, uh, the value of the money that's sent home is actually bigger in local currency terms. So, for example, the Mexican peso has lost a lot of its value this year. Anyone who receives US dollars uh, and converts them into pesos will get more pes pesos than previously. So in that way, also, it acts as a, as a, as a force for um, a stability. Now, those are all fair points, but does your research also show, though, that some countries have become, I don't know if dangerously is the right word, but maybe too reliant on remittances, and then that is not a good thing? Oh, well, clearly, being reliant on any so one source of income um, is dangerous. Um, it's best not to have all your eggs uh, in one basket. Um, the, 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 I think the more, the more important question is, um, uh, is it better than nothing? Uh, and it clearly is better than nothing. Is it better than the alternatives? Well, to the extent that there aren't alternatives uh, that exist, um, certainly not in the short term, then it's very important uh, that, um, that we do more uh, to try and support and maximize uh, the impact of remittances. And what does that mean? Well, first of all, it means that um, uh, rich countries, rather than uh, tightening their Im immigration controls, or even worse, trying to get existing migrants to go home, uh, should be um, uh, maintaining uh, their current immigration stance. And secondly, that they should be um, accelerating the measures they're already putting in place uh, to make it cheaper, cheaper and safer uh, to, to send uh, remittances back. And thirdly, that we should be exploring some of the schemes that already exist um, to actually leverage 
of the impact of remittances. For example, in Mexico, there's a scheme called the Tres por Uno, whereby every dollar that is sent back um, for investment in community projects is matched three for one by the Fed one dollar from the federal government, one uh, from uh, the provincial government, and one from the local government. And in that way, uh, you can um, maximize the impact of remittances. And we should see more of that uh, uh, during uh, these difficult times. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Mexico because they're on the next chart that I want to show. Once again, World Bank figures for 2007. This is not as a percentage of GDP, but rather the top recipient countries in the world at, measured by U.S. billions of dollars. And India is up there at number one, 35 billion plus in remittances received. China, almost 33 billion. Mexico in at number three, 27 billion plus. And then the Philippines, which we've talked about a couple of times already, just over 16 billion. How do you anticipate these countries faring over the course of the next few years as the recession takes hold and as the remittances almost certainly are reduced? Well, I think the, the impact on India and China is going to be relatively small because they're, 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 they're huge economies. And even though they receive a large uh, uh, number of, of uh, large total of remittances, as, as a proportion of the economy, uh, it's relatively small. Uh, in terms of the Philippines, um, it's going to be significant, especially if it's combined um, with uh, job losses of um, uh, workers abroad um, and therefore um, uh, you know, a, a double impact on the economy. In terms of Mexico, well, its main export remains oil, and so it's more dependent on the, on the price of oil um, than on remittances. But in terms of the impact on individual communities, it's very significant because um, the thing about remittances is that whereas overseas aid and other um, uh, is, is channeled through governments, whereas foreign investment goes through companies, uh, that uh, remittances go straight into the pockets of local people. Um, and uh, and uh, therefore, if you're uh, dependent on those remittances um, for your everyday um, necessities, um, if you're dependent on them for you know, a, a rainy day when you might get ill, if you're de dependent on them uh, to keep kids in school, uh, then this can have uh, a, a, a very significant impact. But the biggest impact is going to be in you know, the countries that you mentioned earlier, which ha where, where remittances amount uh, to a large uh, share of GDP, and therefore, of course, where um, uh, uh, you know, the, the impact on the economy um, is greatest. Sure. Let's finish up on this, Philly, and that is uh, we want to figure out how the richer and the poorer countries can work better together to ensure uh, the better flow of money from one to the other um, through these instruments of remittances. Are, are governments talking about how to do this and how can they make these uh, remittance payments more effective and more transparent? Well, as I said, I mentioned that the Mexico is tres por uno and one way um, in which you could set up a similar scheme um, at an, on an international scale would be to say for every dollar that a Canadian migrant sends home through um, an official channel, that the Canadian government would match it with one dollar, that the, country to, the government of the country to which it is sent matches it with one dollar, and an international organization, say the World Bank, matched it with a third. And in that way, you would be maximizing uh, the impact um, of remittances which were challenged, channeled into a community uh, and uh, a development projects. Um, the second way uh, is uh, uh, to increase, uh, to make it uh, cheaper and safer um, uh, to send uh, money home. Uh, and thirdly, obviously, uh, is uh, migration policy itself. Uh, you know, the more uh, that uh, rich countries are open uh, to migrants from developing countries, um, then the more potential uh, there is uh, for people to send home uh, these vital remittances. Philippe Legrain, it's good of you to join us on the line from London. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Thank you.